for him at the moment, trying to punch a hole out there. 12.4 kilometers to go. We've got uh, uh, Lotto Yombo. Moreno Hoffland is their man. Good uh, lead out man as well. Rob Wagner, don't forget. Uh, he's a good wrestler as well, Wagner, and that could be important when road space becomes a premium. It is a sort of a classic lead in, however, and when we roll through what were our uh, golden sprints, our golden uh, kilometer. In just a few moments' time, you'll know when we approach that we're about 3Ks from home. 11.9 right now, and we look down and long through this group. Some teams are prepared to um, let others battle it out and pick their moment. And one team that's been very good at that of late is Lampre Merida. Unfortunately, Sasha Madolo was not in the best condition during Poland. I wonder whether he's back at his best. I can't see them up towards the front, but I'm not worried about that. They often leave it late. They do, and I think uh, leaving it late is going to be key today. There seems to be a lot of sky riders towards the front of the peloton. You can see Nuzolo for a uh, Trek Factory racing in the white, but the rider riding on the front is uh, from uh, Yam is Matthias Brando. Uh, so uh, he's right up there. Viviani's sitting fifth wheel. Uh, Stannard is right up towards the front, but uh, you can just see Etix with uh, Alaphilippe uh, Sabatini uh, right up there. A lot of Jempi Drucker, the um, uh, Surrey Classic uh, winner, moving up as well for uh, BMC. You can just see the peloton is um, in one line at the front. You see a lot of the um, Lotto NL Yumbo, a little, a little bit of pushing and shoving from uh, Nuzolo and uh, one of the riders from uh, Lotto NL Yumbo. Nuzolo was in the wind. He wanted into the inside to get her on the wheel. And it looked as if uh, Robert uh, Wagner um, was one of the riders trying to keep him out. Just over 10 kilometres to go. Uh, you've seen Trek Factory Racing, uh, Giacomo Nizzolo. Now, he looks like he's going to go freestyle. That might be a wise thing to do. Just tell his uh, lead-out train that, frankly, they're off duty today because road space is at such a premium, and there are other teams that will come up and do the driving for him. So that could be a clever move. Just say, look, I'm in good nick. I'm prepared to lean on some other teams out there. Often difficult to break into the line, but as it gets messy later on, I think freestyle can be the way to go. Yeah, I've already noted that uh, Stanis Gardini is going to freestyle in at the moment. Uh, but you can just see a lot of uh, road space being used up, uh, not a lot of uh, room to move. Uh, Ten kilometres ago now, and it's uh, Orica Green Edge starting to put numbers towards the front. Uh, we've got uh, Danny Pate and uh, Bernie Isel uh, riding at the front of the peloton. Uh, Quincy Atto looking after um, JMP Drucker in the orange um, glasses for uh, BMC. So. A lot of teams putting the rider into position, but still a long way to go inside the last 10 kilometers. And five, it's, it's uh, six uh, Sky Riders now lead the peloton. Well, it's a luxurious thing to be able to get into a lead out train. We've talked about riders freestyling. What we mean is that they're prepared to work uh, into other teams. I'm cycling just uh, coming up. You can see their uh, Latvian champion just uh, maneuvering himself for the time being. but. Um, that's uh, Sarah Montins just working uh, to try and get Heinrich Hauser and uh, uh, Van Genechten into position. But Sky at the moment happy to take on the duty. Uh, looking for Lotto Sudal and, of course, Andre Greipel. And that's not a great thing uh, to happen, unfortunately. And uh, it's, oh, it's Gastau. Um, didn't think it was him, but it is. Um, Gastau then with a rear puncture and too late for him, I'm afraid, to make amends. Luck can pay, play a very big part in a race such as uh, this only seven stages you get it wrong at a moment like this when the pace is up hard to get back in yeah it's going to be very difficult i still think he's got enough time to do that as long as you've got a quick wheel change and that's what i was saying it's very important to have uh, a good position in the convoy but uh, matthias brendley is uh, moving up on the right hand side he's got sarah moltens and uh, heine kausler on the wheel uh, you've also got uh, two riders from uh, Lotto NL Jumbo looking after Hofland. Just behind them you start to see the uh, red jerseys of Lotto Sudal. Black jerseys including the uh, stage winner in the Tour de France Simon Getschka is just behind them. On the left hand side Bernie Iso. Adam Blythe up towards the front for the uh, Orica Green Edge but uh, again nobody really putting big pressure down um, but it's uh, Danny Pate now coming through with uh, Ian Stannard on the wheel for Team Sky. Um, Sky actually looking reasonably relaxed. Uh, the purpose is now picking up, as you can see, as they engage the drive with 8.3 kilometres to go. 
wide open countryside today the wind could have been such a major factor especially when you've got a screen such as that being offered up by the trees right here when you do have this uh, suddenly there's an attack into that kind of zone one of the cart horses just uh, taking fright and uh, looks like he's frightened the goat into the other field all kinds of first scenarios <laughs> they take a left hander yes when you emerge from a screen such as this uh, that's when the re wind really can blow a lot of conversation going on uh, mainly from a lot of Sadal saying where's Andre I'm afraid he's not here at the moment well Jorgen Rollins has got uh, Tim Wellens Tim Wellens uh, last year's winner keeping out of trouble right towards the front of the peloton but you're right Carlton uh, Lotto Sudal sits, still sitting back uh, Danny Pates is the rider still in the front for uh, Sky one of the interlopers on the right-hand side, uh, top spot Vlanderen, and the right-hand side again, uh, Benutz uh, bringing up Seberg uh, behind. You can just see Andre Greipel. So still a long way to go, 7.5 kilometres, but uh, the, the teams are just trying to get information. You can just see uh, Roland, uh, Roland's to the left. He's trying to go over to the, the opposite side to help his train, and he can't get out. So this is uh, confusion a little bit in the front as they see the uh, team of Lotto Sudal on the left left-hand side, but it's still um, sky towards the right with the interloper from uh, Top Sport Flander and White at the front. 7.2 kilometres to go, and uh, we just dip down and uh, check out the lines, and all of a sudden, Lotta Sadal formed themselves almost seamlessly. He got out. Clever Rollins. stuff. Yeah, Rollins got out. He was trying to go over to his lead-out train. He was trapped in the right-hand side, but saw a gap open and moved over there with Wellens, and now they're in control towards the front of the peloton. Not full gas, because there's still uh, just under seven kilometres to go to the finishing line. As we see Manuel Quinziato bringing up Jempe Drucker, the winner of the uh, Ride London uh, Classic, just in the orange uh, glasses. But it's uh, Bernie Iso, Ian Stannard, Sutton, Fenn, and Viviani towards the front for Team Sky. Viviani hunched over. Um, I'm just, uh, well, my pick for the day. I I'm just wondering about Andre Greifel. He's a oh, oh, on the curve. Not nice, at least slid clear and um, uh, back on the bike. Gosh, well, um, no way back, I'm afraid, for that. Just, uh, are you all right, mate, from Sam Bewley? Uh, they'll reassemble themselves and get back in. But uh, like Kukulea, one yeah, of the sprinters so. they were looking look. after. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, front end went down first. Yeah, just a slide out, just uh, the speed that going round the uh, roundabout just slid out, and you can just see... Yeah, it's Jens Kukula, that's what, who they're riding for, and that's why one of these teammates stopped and one of the other riders were coming back from the, uh, the back of the peloton. So it does look as if one of their sprinters is now out because I think with uh, six kilometres to go, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, um, and they know it, so now it's about uh, retrieving the situation. Who else might step into the breach? Maybe Lee Howard, Adam Blythe. We'll see. It was Sam Bewley that stopped to offer up assistance. Uh, Rompot also here. They've got Dylan Gronewegen in the orange uh, Rompot, dead centre of your uh, screen, and uh, Wes Crader as well. 5.8 to go, but it looks all about Lotto at the moment. Lotto versus Sky, and uh, just rolling back in, that's uh, Jens Maurice, who I think is also going to be on retrieval duties here. Just at the bottom of the screen, you see uh, Gastauer just uh, behind the uh, Lamprey car, so uh, he has made it in, so uh, just goes to show you. If you get a good uh, wheel change, use the team cars, uh, you're able to get back within a few kilometres. Good boy, 5.5 kilometres to go then, and uh, no movement, of, or virtually no movement, from the top of the trees here today. So he does get back in, but uh, I don't think Jens Kirkelea is going to have what it takes at the end of the day after that tumble. He'll take a bit of body shock. But in fact, uh, there may well be a bit of waiting for his teammate as well. 5.2. They are waiting. Um, I'm not too sure if it's a Jens Morris that's waiting. He's still got an opportunity. That was probably their sprinter, but I think by coming down hard, it's going to be very difficult to get them back in time. Yeah, it is Jens Maurice that's just waiting up as uh, others that have had their issues also try and get back in. Meanwhile, mobbed across the road, as you can see, with 4.9 kilometres to go. Uh, BMC looking reasonably lively here um, for Jean-Pierre Drucker. Not Philip Gilbert today by the looks of things, but uh, I, I think Philippe would have liked a bit more rolling terrain. Uh, but uh, Drucker is a fast man. It's Lotto Sudal now that take the curve. Uh, Sky have just eased off a little bit. They're sharing duties and happy to do so as we make this big turn. It's more or less straight all the way. Um, you have uh, a sort of a 90 degree, and then it gently bends uh, right and then left, sort of a gentle shimmy, if you like, and then reintroduces to the full straight, and Sky want control at this point. So the road gently wavers and evens out in about 200 metres' time. 
it's a sort of highway link roads w that we're on right now and then it's more or less a straight road all the way to the line a few gentle curves but nothing to diminish the speed of the approach not at all and it's uh, Ian Stannard the former British champion on the front of the peloton Team Sky still have three riders 4.1 kilometers to go and just see uh, behind them the Lotto Sudal just waiting to pounce and the right hand side see some of the riders in the black coming up for a uh, giant uh, Alpecin but uh, Lotto NL Jumbo still have four riders up there, three of them uh, looking after uh, Marino Hofland. Sky then on the drive, this is about uh, getting... Oh, he's made it back. He, he has made it back in. And uh, I'm just trying to see whether Kirk Allaire, what sort of nick he's in. Uh, there we are. He's uh, got some road rash, I'm afraid. Going to be a bit painful. I can't see him being a major contender at the end of the day, not with 3.5 kilometres to go, but at least he's back in and he'll hold on to his time and he'll live to fight another day in Breda tomorrow. 180 kilometres there, and it'll be Ardoy with 171, Antwerp the 14k time trial, and then, of course, we head off to the Amstel Gold, the Liege Bristol Liege, and the Flanders venues. Very familiar to you. Uh, early rolls of the dice. Anybody going to be tempted here? Not just for the time being. It looks like the lead-out trains have got this one nailed down. And Team Lotto Jumbo working for Moreno Hoffland in the yellow and uh, black also involved. Three kilometres to go. This is the golden kilometre zone, by the way. That was the first of those uh, little intermediate bonus sprints that we had earlier on that proved so popular with everybody. Uh, the uh, breakaway went through and hoovered up all the bonus seconds. There was three, two and one available on three occasions. Uh, good idea, some of you are saying. Um, many of you uh, still waiting and to, to declare your interest in that right now the interest is all about the approach and frankly it's looking like trek factory racing have got themselves sorted out giacomo nizzolo today is one we haven't overly considered for the men with the white shoulders left hand side of your screen well chris sutton is just in his final turn, turn for a team sky which only leaves uh, andy fenn at the front to scott with viviani behind and surely for the last two and a half kilometers andy fenn cannot go full gas with uh, viviani in the wheel so it does look as if there is not one team controlling the front of the peloton they're trying to get organized even the uh, lotto nl jumbo in the yellow uh, are all over the place. It uh, looks as like a very messy sprint to uh, Yam Cycling, trying to get over, trying to connect with their sprinter. Uh, coming up to two kilometres to go, Heinrich Hausler, the Aussie champion, is still in the mix, but it does look as if in the right-hand side, you've got Trek Factor racing with the uh, Nuzolo trying to come through. Don't discount Porsef for uh, Team Katusha as well. He's got uh, Jacopo Gagnieri as well, who can uh, help out in situations such as this. And Demar's in position for Francis Tichur with two men. And here comes Greipel and the Lotto boys. Now, he is in, right at the back of this and getting disengaged, just squares into the side of the road. He's cut away from his own lead-out train. He's got to make up ground right now. Didn't like that at all. And a man uh, like Greipel uh, shows his emotions on occasion, just tries to ease up. Everyone else is doing the same, and that's played into his hands. It's reassembling for the men in red. They've got Greipel back. Dodgy moment for them. Big attack going from Tinko Saxo as well. Just, uh, I think, probably going for safety apart from anything else. Uh, they've got Mick Rogers, though, don't forget, and Pavel Brut. Can they possibly have uh, caused something of a shock today? Tom Bonin's calling for assistance as well, but uh, Lotto still have it with 1,200 metres to go. It's just so messy at the moment. Uh, and again, Greipel gets pushed out. He's lead out train. Etics take over on the uh, left hand side. Still the rider from Lotto Sudal looking behind they do not know greg henderson goes but they do not know where gripe was he's definitely not in the lead out trying to see they're looking behind yeah gripe's going backwards at the moment and this is a big opportunity for just about everybody else and it looks like lotto might have to just go for secondary choice today yeah, a lot of riders trying to push and shove. Everybody looking oh, behind a crash in the bump. peloton. There we are. So much skirmishing going on. There's a few smiles, bizarrely, from those who are caught out. Not going to have to do any duty today. Is he going to be surprised? Is he going to be Tom Bonin today? Nicky Terster picks it up and starts to inject a little bit of pace. It's an absolute mess. It's spread wide across the road. And I don't think it's going to be Andre Greif. Or if it is, he's got to go freestyle. And he's got to go from now. 200 metres out. Well, proving he can go freestyle, perhaps. greifel has been angered. He's got Viviani with him. Viviani's coming through. Through. Super job as well from Trek and Nitzolo. Nitzolo hitting the line first. And he, oh, Viviani steals it from Nitzolo. Drucker in third place. And the man who was bullied out there was the gorilla. What about that, Brian? Oh, what a messy sprint that was. And uh, yeah, a lot of the uh, lead outs had already been uh, used up. But uh, Viviani came through, just sat there, found the right wheels, just surfed the right wheels. We'll pick him out in the. Uh, the uh, replay, but uh, Viviani wins from Team Sky. 
At uh, one point, they only had uh, Andy Fenn with two and a half kilometres to go, and uh, Viviani just looked after himself. He comes from the track and uh, just held off in his Olo and uh, Jempe Drucker. Well, we mentioned that Andre Greipel um, doesn't like stress, doesn't like to be bullied, and I think he had all of that at the end there. His team were getting stressed as well, just looking for him. They needed binoculars at one point. Look at this. Yeah, you just uh, you just see about uh, eighth, uh, tenth position. You had uh, Greipel. Uh, Ethics were coming up and some numbers. They had uh, four, three riders in front of uh, Tom Bonin. He had some uh, riders up there from uh, Orica Green Edge, uh, Katusha going in the right-hand side. And at this moment in time, uh, when uh, Orica Green Edge were leading out, Tom Bonin was the uh, third rider on the Ethics team, just pushing over in front. I think it was Matty Brescia there. But uh, strike out for home went from Orica Green Edge with the two riders. Looked like um, Adam Blythe was in the mix. Just looking at uh, Greipel going early. Viviani was in the wheel. Nizzolo was there. Jempe Drucker just behind. And you'd think at this moment in time, Greipel would bring it home. But no, um, he just uh, Viviani came over the top. Nizzolo also came uh, straight off Van Poppel, was sorry, Danny Van Poppel came straight over the top for uh, second place and uh, Jempe Drucker hung on for, um, for third place there. So in fact, uh, Nizzolo had already been pushed out there. Uh, Hofland never get involved with the mix, but uh, looking at this here, you would think uh, Greipel would have held on. Shake of the head from Boonen wasn't his day.